scientists want to get a look at how similar some protein sequences are, we typically start with some sort of multiple sequence alignment or MSA tool, and then we want a visual readout of the similarities and differences. Often this is done with clustal formatting, so you might have a clustal text file as well as clustal color coding, even if the results aren't actually coming from the clustal tool. The text file itself is a little easier. Each sequence is going to have a row. Under that row, you want to look for a symbol. If there's no symbol, that means that it's not conserved at that position. If there's an asterisk, that means that it's completely conserved. So all of the amino acids at that position in all the sequences have the exact same amino acid. If it has a colon, then it's strongly conserved. And if it has just a period, then it's weakly conserved. The conservation is considering whether it's conserved within the residue type, so within amino acids with similar properties. There's this whole convoluted list of rules it goes through and asks at this position, this percentage of the residues, are they of this type? So are they hydrophobic? Are they positively charged? Are they negatively charged? Are they polar non-charged? Are they aromatic? That sort of thing. And then there are thresholds that will determine whether it gives an asterisk or it gets a colon or a dot. So that's where you can look in the text file. But then you could also use color coding. A glycine and a proline and a cysteine, those are always gonna be color coded. But for most of the positions, you're only gonna see coloring if that position has conservation. Then there are more convoluted rules. Let's take our positively charged amino acids as an example. If at that position there is a K or an R, it will get colored if 60% of the residues at that position are K or an R, or if 85% of the residues at that position are a K, an R, or a Q, even though Q is not positively charged. So there's these weird rules about whether things are colored or not, but the bottom line is that the coloring is going to indicate the biophysical properties, and if things are colored, then it's indicating that that position has some degree of conservation except if we're talking about glycine, proline, cysteine, then you wanna see, okay, well, how conserved are they? If they're all the same color, they're at least all in the same class. They could be a colon and where they're the same class, but they're not all identical, such as if you have a valine and then you might have leucine and those are in the same class, they're both these nonpolar amino acids, so you get a colon. Whereas if there were all valine, then you would get a asterisk and if you had something like a threonine sneak in there, well, then you're going into polar. And so now you might only have a colon if the rest of them were all in the nonpolar class. And then if you see no symbol, that means it's non-conserved. That's the basics of these coloring and of the symbols under the sequences. Those are indicating the degree of conservation based on the biophysical properties.